Remember we talked about the fact that if you have a letter of credit and you have issue with the country risk, you can use a confirmed letter of credit which enable you to have another buyer in another country to give you additional undertaking. You are welcome to DDA, DBA TV where we share everything about international trade. In today's video, I'll be talking about mitigating payment risk. And I will be talking about using guarantee and standby in a situation where there is a country risk, what is often called sovereign risk, or what is often called political, economic, or legal risk in a country. So let's assume you are doing a shipment to a country. The buyer says it's not going to give you a letter of credit or a confirmed letter of a letter of credit now. So he wants to do open account. And because it's not giving a letter of credit, you can't do a confirmed letter of credit. But it's willing to give you an undertaking just in case it should happen with payment. It's willing to give you an undertaking. So there is an underlying factor. They will give you an undertaking. So meaning, you know, we've discussed mitigated payment with letter of credit, mitigated payment with, with confirmed letter of credit, mitigated payment with standby letter of credit. If you have not, uh, if you have not um, watched that video, you can check the playlist, you can check the channel. You'll be able to see it. We've done it before. Now, mitigated payment with credit. credit. Then there's also mitigating payment with the demand guarantee. Now, remember we talked about the fact that if you have a letter of credit and you have issue with the country risk, you can use a confirmed letter of credit which enable you to have another buyer in another country to give you additional undertaking. So let me paint a picture for you. Let's assume you have an open account of cash against document transaction and you want to protect yourself with guarantee or standby. So imagine a scenario. I'm an exporter. I have a buyer in Venezuela. And ordinarily, if I'm doing open account, I will ship the goods to him. Before I ship the goods, he will send me a guarantee. Uh, he will send me a guarantee. The guarantee comes to me. That's the bank of the, of the, uh, of the buyer's bank. The buyer's bank will send me a guarantee or standby letter of credit. On the strength of that, I will ship the goods. I will ship the goods. It will, I will send document to him. He will collect the document. He will clear the goods and pay me afterwards. If he fails to pay, I will call on the guarantee. So let's assume it's now in an environment where there's a political and economic risk. I can use an instrument called counter guarantee or counter standby. Counter guarantee or counter standby. Counter, C-O-U-N-T-E-R. Counter guarantee or counter standby. A counter guarantee or counter standby we enable uh, the bank in Venezuela to issue an instrument in my favor that will ensure that I get paid outside Venezuela. So in this arrangement, the Venezuela bank will issue a counter guarantee or counter standby in favor, maybe a bank in New York, Citibank. Citibank in New York will not, on the strength of the counter standby receipt, on the strength of the counter standby receipt, issue a guarantee or counter standby in my favor. On the strength of counter standby or counter guarantee receipt, issue a guarantee or counter a, a guarantee or standby in my favor. So when that guarantee or standby is issued in my favor, when that guarantee of standby is issued in my favor, I can ship the goods and send document directly to the buyer in Venezuela. Now, if for any reason there is an issue with payment, remember. I already have issue with the economy of Venezuela. So I'm not expecting payment to actually come from Venezuela. I can get my bank to send a demand for that payment, not to Venezuela, but to Citibank New York. So I'm still using guarantee and or standby. This can happen 
either I'm using guarantee or I'm using standby. But in a case where I have a sovereign risk, political economic risk in a country that makes me uncomfortable to be expecting my payment from that country, but now I want my payment to come from another country, but this is not a letter of credit transaction, so I cannot be asking for confirmed letter of credit that allow another bank in another country to give additional undertaking. In this arrangement, I will be having only one bank to pay. You, you know, in confirmed letter of credit, the importer's bank and the confirming bank have obligation to pay. In this arrangement, the importer bank does not have obligation to pay me. It has obligation to pay Citibank New York because immediately I call on that guarantee or standby with Citibank New York. Citibank New York will send a demand to the Bank of Venezuela Zella, asking for payment. Asking for payment. And typically Citibank already have their account. It will debit their account with them. Um, because they also need to protect themselves. If I'm not comfortable with Venezuela, why would Citibank be comfortable with Venezuela? It must be that they have a way of obtaining payment. That's why they're comfortable with them. In this arrangement, I will get paid by Citibank in New York and Venezuela Bank will reimburse Citibank. Now, what this is telling you is that, you know, if there is one thing you need to know if you really want to be a major exporter and trade very well and be able to grow and get funding from bank, you must learn these two instruments. Standby letter of credit, demand guarantee. 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 In fact, let me tell you something. Since you know, open account is the most widely used payment method in the world, as risky as it is. During the financial crisis in the United States in the U.S., many businesses lost money because they could not get paid because of financial crisis, because they were using open account. So look at what has happened. Because of the losses that many organizations in queue at that time, a lot of organizations now, who still use open account now demand for a guarantee or standby as a backup against the risk of not getting paid. As a backup against the risk of not getting paid. So that if they don't get paid, they can fall back on the guarantee and standby. Since 2010, the usage of guarantee and standby has been on the rise. So guarantee and standby now usage is very high because of this issue. That is why any individual who is thinking of having a future in trade, particularly if you're a banker or if you're an exporter, you want to have a good understanding of how to protect yourself, please go and learn this instru instrument, guarantee and standby. And like I said in the last video, you can actually buy a copy of the guarantee and standby through our link online. I'm through uh, I'm the soft copy online on seller.co, C E S E L A R.co, seller.co. I believe this video has been of help to you. The fact that you can now protect yourself against the risk in a country and be able to get another bank in another country to pay you even though you are not using a letter of credit instrument that will enable you to do a confirmed letter of credit in which another bank in another country give you additional undertaking. If this video has been of immense benefit to you, if you have learned one of the from this video, give it a thumbs up, like the video. If you have friends who you think will need this video to learn about exactly what you have learned, share with your friends. If you have questions, you would like to ask me more about demand guarantee, please drop it in the comment section of this video. In addition to that, if you are new to this channel, subscribe to the channel. And more importantly, click on the notification bell so you know when we upload the next video. My name remains Delaimibo, and I'm your export doctor, and I'm signing out.